Rick Saverian Brothers Associates and Collaborators are a true religious family striving to fulfill the spiritual aspirations that Theodore James Riken had for his congregation. Following the path of our founder, we are called to live ordinary lives and give witness to God's unconditional love. We believe that the Xaverian calling is a way of being put in our place in the world, a place of humility and simplicity, from which we receive the grace to turn toward God, fall in love with God, and put ourselves in God's service as followers of Jesus Christ. Within each distinctive life choice, we are further invited to attentiveness, simplicity, flexibility, and openness to the common, unspectacular flow of everyday life. We unite ourselves to God through an integrated life of both contemplation and service. Through the Xaverian way, we are awakened by the Spirit of God to our own greatest potential and freely offer that giftedness in service to the Gospel. Through our ministry, in particular among the poor and the marginalized, we work to help others discover their own uniqueness so they too may share the love of God with the world through their own giftedness. In spirit of hospitality, we try our utmost to be approachable and available. As true brothers and sisters, we welcome others and accompany them in the joys and sorrows of their lives. As laymen called to live for God and God alone through a life of consecrated celibacy, we Zavarian brothers freely choose to live without privilege or entitlement and allow ourselves to be formed by God through the common, ordinary, unspectacular flow of everyday life. Motivated by the lofty purpose proposed by the congregation by our founder, we set as our life direction the integrated life of Martha and Mary. The activity I did first when I came as an aspirant I worked with the street kids. I think these young people are in need of love, of affection. Once you show them affection, they will see that everything will be okay, all right, and they will also show you affection. They do also love. We live the spiritual life while being in ministry, and we live ministry while doing our spiritual life, so it is combined. Like Mary in the presence of Jesus, we choose the better part by turning toward and falling in love with God. I've done things in the Zverian Brothers or I would never, could ever have imagined. Uh, uh, I, I certainly never imagined uh, going to Africa. I never imagined being a novice director. Uh, I never imagined living for years with uh, two severely disabled young men. I came across these young men and some brother wrote to me and said, no, no, they crossed your path. You didn't cross their path. He had some different distinction to make about that, uh, that somehow they were sent into your life and that your experience uh, of, in silence and the contemplative living, re life of reflection, that allowed you to be with them like Martha, we are transformed by that love and impelled to place ourselves in humble service to Jesus through our service to others. Part of my prayer, almost, it's not every morning, but it's a very frequent part of my prayer, is a prayer for the kind of wisdom and insight and presence through which I'd be willing to say, that was my plan but this kid at the door doesn't fit that plane. Rather than push that kid out and stick to my plane, part of my consciousness is change the plane. You know, take up the reality of the everyday. You know, uh, rather than the planned 
structured every day that I thought I was going to have, which makes me feel very competent and very much in control. It's, it's hard for me to let go of that often, but I've gotten better at it because usually the surrender of that degree of feeling of competence and control, um, I have a much, a much better sense of the way the way that God might be present in this moment. We aspire to realize our founder's vision of a band of brothers who mutually help, encourage, and edify one another, and who work together. We're lucky because we also have a community type of existence, so we have the brothers to rely on. We don't stay by ourselves. We have someone to unburden and to share our problems with. As it says in our own constitutions, in our own fundamental principles, the brothers are a band of brothers who mutually encourage, support, edify one another. So, so we're not alone. We're not alone. We endeavor to integrate prayer and contemplation with growth in friendship within the community by means of honest and fraternal dialogue. I think I was here about maybe three or four weeks and I was sitting out on the patio and I was reading a book and uh, Brother Ed Keefe, who used to be headmaster here, came out and he took out a cigarette and stuff like that and he looked at me he says, how you doing Clem? I mean this has got to be a really tremendous change for you. How do you think you're handling this? And we had one of the best you know, conversations, and I felt so incredibly good that he took the time out to have this discussion with me. And that's a real, uh, I, f I f feel that with, with all the brothers here in the house. We understand that the way of perfection our founder envisioned for us is a way of continual formation. Father Von Kahn, with whom I studied, used to say we're spirit through and through. And, um, we need to attend and to listen to that very ordinary life that's ours. Um, and we'll discover that, um, that the spirit and the presence of God is very alive in that. This takes place for us in our community life, as well as through our individual practices of prayer and contemplation. I don't believe that a religious life has a good has a future uh, without excellent communities. I think that communities are the first condition to have a future. That's my deep conviction. As far as work is concerned, nobody could reproach me not to have worked enough. But you, all of you, could approach me not to have prayed enough. I should commit more time to prayer. And it's still now, I, although I am older, so I have so many concerns and so, and why pray? How could we do this and how could we do that? In community, we are encouraged to discover our gifts and talents and affirm the giftedness of our brothers calling each other to greater service of the Lord. They have given me a nickname, which I never expected, from um, you know, the ever-ready batteries, the Energizer Bunny. <laughs> so I, I take that as a, a compliment. <laughs> it's a, kind of a good fantasy to, to keep alive. Here we find the encouragement and support to live a life of asceticism, consecrated celibacy, and contemplation that by the grace of God strengthens our public commitment to vow for poverty, chastity, and obedience. So I, you know, I'm glad to, I have an easy cross, you know, people who have physical stuff and everything else. See, God has really taken care of me. Here I am, 92 years old, no glass. I, I just, I have glass in my very self. I'm reading for, for reading this, but all. I can hear everything. And I have no pains, except that my balance is rotten. 
So I have my car, my walker, and being proud, it gives me some sympathy. So, <laughs> so such a thing, yeah, so. As a community nourished by the memory of brothers who have followed this way before us and enriched by a growing intercultural presence, we, together, search out the needs of the times and the desires of the Lord in our regard. I joined a small group uh, youth movement, I called it Kiro, from uh, my parish. This movement was initiated by one of the brothers, uh, Joris the Grotz, as a Belgian brother. So uh, this group helped me. The brother had been around. I was not alone, we were many. So the brother helped us through that kind of movement, through that kind of uh, uh, group of uh, uh, movements. So it was wonderful for me. Then I understood that we are called to support each other and to help each other. That's why I'm very happy because I, I feel, I felt that love and I continue feeling that love and that support, though I have been brought up by a single uh, parent, so my mother, this is. We appreciate and embrace the lay character of our congregation rooted in the Roman Catholic Church. You know, when I was in the 40s, I was in grammar school, and it was a very different time than it is now. And it was a strong Catholic parish, traditional Catholic parish. And we had four or five priests who were wonderful men. So, oh, definitely, I probably was, I was thinking of priesthood, even, at, you know, in, in grade school. But when I met the brothers, um, it was just, <laughs> I guess the only word I can say is I got hooked. <laughs> and, and priesthood went out. And, and looking back on it, I look back on that and I say, I'm really happy I'm a brother, you know. I really don't think I, I would want to be a priest, especially today. From our place within the church, we live in solidarity and availability among the people. I have liked the way of the Severian brothers, although I'm married. If there is any way that I would help, maybe as a volunteer or as an associate, I would really want to. Because I like the way the brothers live. They are different from all these religious congregations that I've known. Because they are simple and they take themselves as ordinary people. That is so encouraging to me, although I'm married, I'm, I'm married with children. But I would really want to associate with them. I would really want to associate myself with them and do anything for them because I like the way of life. Freely renouncing any sense of power or prestige and striving to witness to the ideals of the first gospel community. Because I have seen them even when they are professing, uh, some of them even they have no need of putting on the habits. They don't, they have no need they appear to be among the people. Now that comes, living among the poor and the marginalized. You don't realize who is who. We are sent as missionaries to the world to participate in the church's mission of evangelization. You know, right from the time when you start understanding what, what Christianity is about, okay, uh, you know, this, this, is, this is a way of living out Christianity, and it's, it's the way that I've, I've opted in my life to, to live out Christianity. And, uh, you know, perhaps some people would say, well, it's too extreme, but that this is what I've done, and, uh, you know, I'm comfortable with this, and so therefore, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's not of, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not a great hardship to me. It's, it's, it's my thing. Like Theodore Riken, we believe that the best way to bring out the giftedness in an individual is through education. But we realize that education takes many forms. And I try to bring joy among the young brothers. And to me that's more, more formation than classroom work. When you see young boys being happy and feeling a, feeling a sense of belonging, that is, to me, it is it's more formational, that's classroom work in terms of teaching scripture, teaching developmental skills and all that. 
We see our way of life as being intimately connected with our mission. We believe that it is through our life of gospel witness, lived in community, that we respond to the Spirit's summons to manifest God's care and compassionate love to the people of the world in these times. The last thing he did before he died on the cross, he turned and forgave the good thief. And uh, that's a very heroic and it's an outstanding thing that most of us Catholics don't think about. And most of us don't relate with people less than us. They just believe that prisoners should be beaten and uh, disciplined and made to do things. And uh, my system was uh, to love them. And my volunteers, that was their attitude too. And uh, I was very thankful for that because I know we actually helped a lot of prisoners. We are called to live our mission, whether on the outskirts of society, among the poor and marginalized, or at the center, among those who are separated and estranged from their own uniqueness. Uh, you may see that there are people who are ready or willing to go elsewhere, to live with poor and marginalized. Next year, I'm finishing my diploma. I'm planning, I'm feeling that I'm called to, to go elsewhere, like in Sudan, South Sudan, in Haiti. So that's my own way of approaching the mission because I'm feeling that I'm called to go outside my country, elsewhere, to be with those who are in need of Zavirian uh, affection, uh, what can I say, who are in need of something from Zavirian brothers. Impassioned with the spirit-driven apostolic zeal, following the example of our patron Francis Xavier, we stand ready to leave the familiar and the comfortable to go throughout the world to teach all peoples. The Zaverian Brothers founder, Theodore Reichen, had a vision that was unique. To form a community of laymen who as religious brothers would be sent as missionaries to the world. As vowed members of the people of God, they would participate in the church's mission of evangelization through a life of gospel service in solidarity with people. In spite of witnessing the horrors of racial violence, of living at one time on the edge of extinction and of experiencing poverty, the early Severian brothers did not let their vision die in the ashes, but kept it burning. And thanks to them, we are who we are today, brothers, laymen and women, all part of a rich past and a promising future, of a history still living and unfulfilled. I am convinced that this is the age of the laity in the church. The early vision of the brothers has now been entrusted to you. Enrich it, shape, form, adapt it to the changing times. Be a corporate memory of the vision that is still burning bright. Don't let the flame go out. Don't let the flame go out.